Okay. Uh, I think that's enough of the offline development debugging tools here. Uh, let's now talk about the runtime tools. So I'm going to start uh, start this project up. And uh, because I put that option explicit, I am getting an error in my script, which I suppose I could show you. I could show you that issue as well. All right, I will show I will show that to you. Shut it down, so I'm going back to it. So it, it tells me, and did you see that pop-up? Sometimes Vizzy Plus does this. This is a tricky thing. So there's a pop-up, uh, but then after the pop-up appeared, then the Vizzy Plus window appeared. So I'm going to press Alt-Tab, and you can see, hey, here are the different uh, windows that I have open, and I'm going to click this pop-up. And it tells me, hey, there's an error. Do you want to check it out? I'm going to hit yes. And it opens up this script debugger tool. So this is the uh, online script debugger tool. It's got the highlighting the issue. It says it's expecting a scalar value here. This exit background script, I never dimensioned it. So because of that, it's not happy. So we can see and find it right there. Uh, also worth noting, the line number is right here. Uh, oftentimes, you can see down here in the output window, I'm going to mention this in a second, tells you, hey, there was an error executing the basic script at this line and this offset. So you can find your line number and then say, hey, what's my offset? So 20 characters in or so, and I think 27 it says, is where the issue started. So, okay, that's great to know. Uh, I'm going to stop this and fix that error, and then we'll take a look at some, some of these other tools. I'll, I'll describe this output window a little bit more, and we'll get to look at the, the watch window as well. Those are probably two of our uh, most useful tools. Okay. So let's remove that addition, or I can just dimension this. I'll just dimension this. As fully. Okay, great. Now if I run it, this is my simulator. Now the simulator's fine, so it should be fine when I'm doing my actual project run. No more error from, from that script, so great. Uh, okay, so let's take a look at the output window. So the things that I wanted to, to mention on the output window, it might start out pinned, not pinned down here like this. So when you're running your simulation, if you see something like this and you want to see your output window, hover over this bottom, and then I'm going to come over here and pin this because I like to see it all the time. I think it's very useful. Um, so the output window has a bunch of different tabs. And if you remember the logs files, all of these tabs are the different names of those log files. So you can see details about your database management, your recipes and databases, and it's telling you, hey, I just created these two database tables. Great. Uh, and if under system, this is the most common one where I'm almost always looking. Uh, at the system, you can, you can find general information like, hey, I'm starting, I'm launching this driver, and hey, I've got this driver communication error. Uh, this makes sense because I'm not connected up to my PLC, so it's having a communication error. It can't, can't reach it. Um, so all oh, my PLC tags aren't going to be updating. Um, since I'm in demo mode uh, with the simulation, you're allowed to run it for, I guess, two hours, it looks like. Um, but here are some more important things. Remember the refactoring explorer told us we couldn't find this variable uh, in the data logger? Well, this, the, the output window is telling me the same thing. That's very useful. And because of that, this data logger wasn't even able to initialize. So nothing is going to work with this data logger until we fix this. Um, so that's an important thing to know. Um, OK, that's the output window. Um, and we talked about the script debugger. Uh, maybe I'll show you one other piece of the script debugger while we're at it. Um, so uh, if, if this is not here, uh, you can press it by these different icons here. So it, I just deleted it so you could see what happens if you don't see it. You can say, hey, I want to I see, I don't know, click any of these. And it opens this window, and then there are all these different tabs here. Um, so I'll mention the watch window in a minute, uh, which is one of the most important tools, but let me finish up with the script piece since I start off, started on that earlier. Um, so I'm double clicking this script. That's it, This is showing me what scripts are running. Uh, I double clicked it and it's telling me, hey, here's what's running. And in this one, you get this uh, immediate window as well, which is kind of nice. So you can do things like say, uh, I don't know, show me the variable value of, um, let's tell me what exit, what was that one, exit background script and it tells me up oh, exit background script is currently false and you can put breakpoints in at different at different spots as well and when you hit the breakpoint then you could uh then you could step into your code i'll just hit a pause 
And so it tells me, hey, my code is running right here. And so if I hit step into, it's going to keep going and you can step step by step, step through my code, right? Uh, and because this if statement isn't true, I'm never hitting my breakpoint. That's why that one didn't get run into. Um, and so, yeah, you get your basics of step into, step over, step out uh, to, to debug your, your code here as well. Um, you can also see your stack. So if you're calling different functions or different subroutines, you can see that uh, what's been loaded and you have a little watch here as well. So, uh, all right, I think that's the basics for debugging with scripts in runtime. Um, let's get back and I'll keep that running just for kicks. Close this down. Uh, okay, the next one is the watch window. So this is an extremely useful tool. So the watch window here, you might, when you press this watch, it might be on this project tab, which it gives you some information, but I'll say isn't necessarily the, the, the most valuable piece. So you can see things about the heap and uh, how many TCP clients you've got connected, what's your peak variables in, in use, how many are you using maximum. Um, and so, I mean, there's some useful things here, but by and large, what's most valuable is moving off of this project tab into a, one of your watches. Um, and so here you can see I've got a few variables that I added here already. And you can see what their values are. Um, so if I wanted to add a new variable to this list, I would press this new watch. And then I go navigate to whatever tag I want to look at. And let's just pick one. And now I've added this guy to the watch window. Now his value is nothing, apparently. Uh, and, oh, it, and its quality is bad because this is coming from the PLC and there's no connection to the PLC right now. So um, let me show you this one. This one's a local variable in the HMI. It's set to 16. If you want to make an edit to that value, um, you can click in this value box, but you have to click pretty much right in the center. And then you get this highlighted like this, and I can set it to 87. So I can change the value of these, these things if I want to. But if I click like over here, I'm clicking on right now, and see how it's not highlighting the 87 letting me change it? Well, if you kind of, you, you really have to click right in the middle of the column. So now I, I click right here and then it highlighted it and lets me change it. So that's a weird quirk in the Z plus. So something to be aware of, click in the middle of the column if you're trying to change something in the watch window. Um, okay, uh, obviously also you can delete things. So uh, there's this delete icon. And if you wanted to save your watch window and load a watch window, you can do all sorts of things like that as well. All right, I think that's enough about the watch window. Um, let's take a look at, uh, I want to show you also a, a way that you can even see the, the logs that we were talking about before. Uh, you can actually display them in your screen itself. Um, so I think I have that over here, uh, SD debugging page. Yes, I do. So uh, this is a log window. It's one of the objects in the toolbox. It's called the log window. And uh, it allows you to, to see a list of your logs. Uh, it looks like this one might be showing all of my logs. So I can see there was an alarm that happened. So, uh, and I can also see communication errors that happened. So this one is showing me basically everything that it can, it can find. Uh, and, and so you'll see basically all of this uh, things in the output window you should see in here as well. And you'll also see alarms that are getting triggered and things along those lines. Um, I'll show you what that window looks like in the development environment and how to use that uh, briefly. And then I think we've covered the majority of useful debugging tools. Uh, so let me show you that quick. Uh, here it is. So this is the log window. If you, if you wanted to uh, grab it from here, it's under objects log window and there it is but since i already have one on here i'm going to delete that one and then the properties over here yeah the properties of this log window you can edit uh, the, uh, edit by event type so like i was saying it's showing all of them you said i only want to see my alarms this is great for historical alarm management you say hey i only want to see my system messages that's the output system messages in the system.log file that we were looking at earlier I only want to see comm driver messages, so I only want to know if I lost communications to my PLC. Um, that's what this one is useful for. And then all is going to show all three. And that's really all, all there is to, uh, to this log window. And I think that covers the majority of uh, the debugging tips that I wanted to share today.